Hello and welcome to DNR's Burn Portal tutorial series. Uh, in this video, we'll cover applying for a burn permit. Uh, so once you have uh, signed into the system, um, there are two locations that you can get to to apply for a permit. One is in the permits tab here. Uh, you can apply for a permit here. Or the other is up in the gray bar, which carries across to every screen. You can go to permits and apply online. From here, you'll come to a, a, a screen um, that will take you through step by step for each of the burn permit application processes. Uh, at any point in time, you can view the instructions that will give you uh, instructions on how to complete the application, how to complete the signing process, how to pay uh, and create an order, and then what happens after your permit is uh, submitted. So we can look through apply, sign, pay, and review. And that's available through any point of the application process. Uh, you can also delete your application at any point in time if there's uh, some reason you need to. Um, and if there's an application that you've already completed or are halfway through completing and you need to duplicate it for any reason, you can copy any application um, in any stage. Anything that is mandatory will have a red asterisk uh, next to the uh, um, next to the field. Uh, these are fields that we have to have information for. Uh, any place where there's a small I uh, like this is uh, some additional information. So we need to know size of the area that the material is coming from. Uh, we need to know whether it's a piled slash burn, a broadcast slash burn, or it's a natural underburn. In this information, we're gonna we need to know who the landowner is. Uh, so if you're filling this out for yourself, you would click on person. Uh, if you're filling this out on behalf of an individual, um, you would go agent or uh, check the box to be an agent also. Um, and if you're filling this out for an agency, a large landowner, um, land management agency, uh, then you would use the agency tab and the agent uh, checkbox as well. In this case, we're just gonna do this as a landowner. Now, because of the way the system works, uh, some folks have multiple mailing addresses and phone numbers, uh, depending on companies and uh, various locations. So it does require that you choose uh, one of the phone numbers and addresses listed in your profile before it will let you continue. The uh, location information tends to mess people up a lot, um, but basically we need to know where your burn is. If you have the lat long and the uh, the legal description from say your tax uh, documentation for your parcel, um, you can fill that in directly. Uh, if not, the easiest thing to do is to zoom in on the map and find your location. And you can change background imagery um, to help you find your location. Once you've got your location, you click on the globe, then click on the map. And we can see that the township and range information filled in and the lat long information filled in. If we're happy with that, go ahead and click the globe again. That saves it. Uh, burn address is only necessary if it's an actual addressed parcel. Uh, that you're burning on. This is not your home address. That's the information that we got in the previous section. Um, there are a few things that it does not fill in. Uh, most of the time it's pretty good. Um, fire districts sometimes don't show up uh, and it will not pull in elevation or slope. Um, if there's something that, that, uh, that you're unsure of, um, so local fire district and region or county or anything along those lines, um, you can always click again and try and reset it. And sometimes that will pull in the information. In this case, it has not. So this is uh, South Puget region. And if there, if you're unsure what uh, Fire Protection District is, you can simply send a type unknown. 
unknown or unprotected, um, and it will pull it up. And then you can just add that in there. The pieces that it will not pull up again are the elevation and the slope. Uh, you need to have that information. And then the last bit is driving directions. We need to know uh, how to get there from the nearest primary road or highway or state route or whatever. Um, we're just going to get some information in here to move on. If there's any pieces that are missing, uh, it will flag it you'll, and it'll direct you back to fill in that, that necessary information. Um, primary force types, we need to know what type of uh, timber this is coming from. Um, again, it's got the, the little uh, information button here so you can figure out which force type uh, is appropriate. Once you've determined which one it is, uh, read through the descriptions, um, you can then go ahead and select which one uh, best fits. We need to know a reason for burning. Um, depends on uh, what you're doing. In this case, we're going to choose silvicultural. We also need to know how many people are going to be on site. This is a minimum. You can have more, but this will be your requirement. If you say there's going to be 15 people, there will have to be 15 people on site. And a unit name. Um, for most individuals, this can just be your, uh, uh, your last name. Uh, larger organizations will have specific unit names. These other pieces are good to have if you have that information, but not required. Uh, we want to know any days specifically that you are not going to burn. Otherwise, check every day that you might possibly burn. We're going to wait until wet conditions or snow. Uh, we need to know uh, if your burn site is within uh, 500 feet or so of any major public areas or uh, structures that are not owned by you. Uh, if you choose yes on any of these, we'll need to know the uh, more refined distance and what direction it is. This helps for conditioning the permit. Uh, we also need to know if there's equipment on site or off site. Um, if you click yes to any of these, FILA will expand and ask for more information. After we've moved on from that, we get into pile groups. Um, there are instructions for, for uh, pile groups up here that you can go to. You can click on this uh, piled fuels, biomass, and emissions calculator tab here to see the uh, various um, pile shapes. So if you need to know if your pile is a half ellipsoid or a paraboloid, um, this is where you can get to see the shapes. Since we chose that this is a pile burn, we have to enter at least one pile in here. Uh, group them based on general sizes. If you have 15 piles and they're all wildly different, then you're going to need to enter 15 pile groups. Um, if they're all relatively the same, then you can enter fewer pile groups. We're going to say these are paraboloid. Uh, there are different requirements for hand or machine piles. They are 15 by 20. Machine piles typically have a little bit of dirt in them, so we'll say they're 5% soil. And we need to know if it's long needle or short needle. That depends on or uh, uh, changes how compact the piles are and how much material we can fit in there to get a better estimate of how much is in there. Uh, same for species. This is important information. It does require that you enter two species. So even if it's a 100% Douglas fir or ponderosa pine, uh, you need to enter it in twice. Um, that's just unfortunately how the calculator works. Uh, we can choose some other things. And if you start typing it, uh, that's the easiest way to get to it. So uh, rather than uh, scrolling through. So we'll say this is Doug fir and Western red cedar. If everything is acceptable, it will take your pile group. If you have more pile groups, this is where you'd add them. You can delete them here. Uh, once you have all the pile information, you click the calculate button. Our red bar goes away, warning us that we need to add more or that we need to calculate our piles. And now we have uh, consumed fuel, which is where your permit fee is generated from. So we continue on again. Uh, we need to know the ignition type. 
the vast majority of people will be doing hand ignition, which is, you know, a propane torch or a drip torch or flares or something along those lines. And then uh, finally, we have documents. Um, this is where you can add uh, additional documentation of a map or your uh, pile calculations that you did off site and brought in. Um, anything additional that would support your burn application uh, can be uploaded here. Shape files, uh, um, Google Earth KMZs, all that can be taken here. And if you have nothing, you continue on, go to the signature. Once it's signed, then you can go through the uh, payment process.